Hello, thanks so much for joining me today. Today I thought we'd look at how to make tea tree soap. Tea tree is a lovely ingredient at the best of times, but because it's got such great antibacterial properties and antifungal and antiseptic properties, I thought it would be a fantastic soap to make up. I've got a collection of ingredients and bits and pieces here and it really doesn't need to be complicated. I'm going to put the recipe for this underneath the video. Super simple. I have my oils here that are already warmed up and melted. And then I've got my sodium hydroxide, my lye in this jug. And for my water, I've actually frozen it and we're going to be mixing it with ice. And that's just going to allow it to just be a little bit quicker. And then the only other thing that I need is my colorant. I'm going to be using a spearmint mica. You could omit that completely and leave it uncoloured if you preferred. And then I've got some tea tree essential oil. It's got a really herbal note to it. So the first thing we're going to do is mix our lye solution. You don't need to do this with the ice. You can just do this straight into regular water. And it really is amazing how much heat is generated from the sodium hydroxide and how quickly that actually melts the ice. And just keep stirring that until all of the ice is completely melted down and then you've got that one lye solution. Now sometimes people ask what kind of stick blender we use. I like a two-piece where the end actually comes off and you can wash it really really easily and I like it to be a stainless steel one rather than plastic because they really do hold up so much better but other than that you do not need to spend an absolute fortune on the stick blender. This particular one is Cookworks and it's actually bought at Argos. I think it's one of their own brands. It really isn't expensive. And before that, for years, we used to use Asda's own brand. So don't think that you need to go out and spend, you know, $100 or more on a stick blender to make soap. You really don't. Now, before I start, I'm going to mix this mica with just a little bit of my oil. And that is going to help to not get clumps in the mixture. You really don't need very much at all. But rather than adding extra oil in, it's actually really nice if you can remember right at the beginning. And I, I often forget, to be perfectly honest, and have to do it the other way anyway. But it is better if you can just use the oil out of your actual recipe. Some people like to use coffee frothers for mixing this and they do work really, really well. That just looks so beautiful. It's such a pretty thing to work with is mica. It just looks like molten silk. And it's always a kind of magical moment when you stir everything in. Just look how beautiful and unctuous that looks. It's just a joy to work with. So you might be thinking, well, why am I making tea tree soap right now? Well, you know, we live in weird times and it's really important that we're still washing our hands all of the time. I just want every protection that I can. And although there are other oils that are really good as well, tea tree has some just amazing properties. And it's just a great way for me to be able to make my own soap and have those additional properties in there. One of the first things is to always burp out all of the air pockets out of your stick blender before you start. Let's give it a whiz. I think I'm actually going to split some of this off into a separate cup and I'm going to add my essential oil in. So I'm going to put a little bit in there and the rest of it's going to go into the main one. And then I'm going to add white into the cup and I'm going to use all of this green into my main section and give that a really good mixing. I don't want a super dark colour. I do want this to be a lighter green. Might add just a tiny touch of white to that as well, just to lift it a little bit. Let me put some white into this one first. 
and then add some white into there as well. I don't want to add too much, just a tiny bit. You can really smell that tea tree. It's quite a clinical smell, I think, is tea tree. It's in between a herbal and clinical smell. I think I'll just use the same one actually for mixing. I definitely should have used a larger jug for this. Pour some of my green in. And then I'm going to pour some of my white in. I'm just going to keep doing that all of the way. It's lovely how, no matter how many times you make it exactly the same way, none of the soaps ever come out the same. Those swirls will always be unique. I'm just going to clean up around the edges a little bit first. And then I might just use this just to give a couple of swirls. I really don't want to swirl it too much. I think that will be enough and then I think just on the surface I'm going to put a few little dots of white and I think we are done and there we have our beautiful tea tree soap and we're going to cut it together so I hope that you're still with me and that you get to see the cut as well. Well, she is ready. Here she is. Now, the surface is a little bit bumpy and that's because instead of just popping it under some blankets, we actually decided to pop it into a warm oven and it's actually slightly overheated. There we go. So I'm just going to go over the surface and just plane it. And actually, you can see all of these air bubbles around the edge of the mould. Those are all formed because it got too hot in the oven. But it's not a problem because we can fix it really, really easily just by planing off that top surface with those bubbles. So it's worthwhile knowing how you can fix it. And I could plane all of those sides off as well whilst it's a loaf. I'm going to leave them and I might plane them off afterwards. That looks great. Really like the patterning on that one. Let's hope that pattern goes all the way through the soap. So far that's looking absolutely brilliant tidy up the edge as I go it just makes it so much easier there we go that's lovely that's a little bit more simplistic it doesn't have quite as much detail inside but I still absolutely love it and then just clean all of the edges as well I just use my fingers just pinch my finger and my thumb and just run it along to just tidy up those edges initially. Of course, you can always use a beveler and just really take off a little edge if you don't like the nice sharp edge. I am a sharp edge lover. I'm quite happy to have that sharp edge. By the time that you've washed with it, it's gone. I mean, it really doesn't take two seconds for you to wash with it the first time and it's already softened up. But I think that is beautiful. I love the soft coloration. That green with the white is absolutely beautiful. That was my spearmint mica color, just with a tiny bit of that titanium dioxide. I think it's the perfect color for my tea tree soap. It smells lovely and herbal and medicinal. And I know this is going to find a special place in our bathrooms. So I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me today and helping me make this beautiful soap. Don't forget, if you do want to have a go with this yourself, you can find the recipe 
underneath in the description. And I do hope that you follow along with me on another video really soon. So why not click the subscribe button if you haven't already joined us. And if you ding the bell, you'll get a simple notification every time that we add a new video for you to enjoy. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye bye for now.